On today's episode, we're sitting down with worshipful brother Paul Chager and brother Dennis Rawlings from Maple Lodge. You're listening to The First Three Knocks, a Masonic podcast in the District of York, where we discuss topics for the betterment of Masonry. The opinions discussed in this podcast are those of the individual and do not represent the views of Grand Lodge or any other Masonic body. Now, here are your hosts. Well, welcome back, brethren. Part two of our episode, sitting down with worshipful brother Paul Chager and brother Dennis Rawlings. And uh, brother Rawlings, we'll turn our attention to uh, to you. You've been sitting there very quietly in the past uh, little while here at the Aurora Temple. Um, you are an interesting individual that uh, we've had the pleasure of meeting. For those who haven't met him, he's an imposing figure. He's a big guy. He's into MMA and probably the, the meanest, nicest Mason that I think we've ever come across in our travels. Uh, also, big welcome to you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. He's also come highly recommended to uh, have sit with us uh, from Right Worshipful uh, Brother Scott Rickman. Yes, uh, yes. And when he had uh, expressed uh, having uh, you as our guest, uh, we already had your name highlighted because, again, I've had the pleasure to meet you a few times uh, at other various lodge events. And I knew that there was something more about uh, just the man that I got to meet. So when uh, when you came uh, uh, referred to by Right Worshipful Brother Scott Rickman, uh, I thought, well, if we've already circled his name and now the big guy is telling us to call upon uh, Dennis, uh, it just it, it all fell into place. So thanks again for Thank taking you. the time Thank and coming out here tonight. Thank you. Um, it, uh, right Worshipful District Deputy Grandmaster Scott Rickman is, uh, is definitely somebody that I look up to and, uh, and obviously wish I could emulate a little bit more and, and I try to um, he's uh, he's been very gracious to me in giving me a, a, a stage if you will to speak uh, amongst the brethren and and for that I'll be uh, indebted it's in it's in stone <laughs> so um but uh, my my journey uh, in masonry if we can go to that for one second is a, a little different um, my wife her her family was uh, her father's family was uh, heavily in, into uh, Freemasonry. His, his mother was uh, head of the Eastern Star, and his, his father held different positions within the district. And um, so that gave me, a, there was two teacups that they gave to us. I've been with my wife for 19 years now. And so they gave us two teacups, and, and that drew me into it. And I remember as a kid, we were playing ball hockey, and there was this uh, uh, a car with the emblem on it. One of, oh, oh, those yeah. Masons, one of, the kids, one of the kids. <laughs> oh, and I was like, what was that? Like, oh, those Masons. I don't know. My dad said a lot about those guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we, uh, and then uh, what happened was is in 2011, my, my mother passed uh, in December. Uh, she came on December 5th to my house for, uh, you know, the Christmas celebration. But she, uh, she, was, uh, very, she, was, she wasn't doing well. So, um, but she came and she came with a, a Christmas gift for me and it was a Masonic dagger. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. wow. And, um, so she gave me that on the fifth and on the 13th, she did the 13th. She, uh, she passed away oh. uh, of pneumonia. So, uh, that, that was, uh, embedded in my head and, you know, I'd been doing my journey and, and then I came across a, a very close uh, friend from when I was a child, uh, that was worshipful brother Peter Vong, uh, from Maple Lodge. And, uh, I, you know, you say, how do you become one? Ask one to be one. That's all it takes. So, uh, I went to him and I'd already been doing so much, uh, digging, if you will. And I, uh, you know, in Freemasonry, they say there's three different, uh, parts to it. There's the fraternal, the corporate, and of course the esoteric, right? And, um... I've taken a liking originally. I, I love the esoteric and the knowledge. I mean, if we look up the definition of a, of a lodge, it's a branch, right, to the tree. Mm -hmm. So we like to uh, to get the information and the knowledge. And uh, I went to the Sankey lectures, and I, I really Great. liked that. There was the Apple Tree Tavern one, and I, I dug into that, and I loved it. And I sat there quiet, but I was getting all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but I wanted to go, oh, 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 like Horshack, you know, <laughs> oh, oh, I know that oh, one. Oh, I know. Oh, oh. But uh, I kept quiet, and I just listened. And then again, like I said, there was uh, there's so many great mentors in our lodge. Very worshipful uh, brother Douglas Lane, mm -hmm. uh, who's been uh, great with me, showing me so many things. A uh, very worshipful brother Brian Stapley, uh, another one. Uh, worshipful brother uh, Carmen Tucci, uh, always there for me, always from day one. You know, just uh, very hospitable, opening the door to me. Uh, a place where you know uh, anybody feels they may not fit in. It's the place where you do fit in. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the compass, right? So yeah. it, can, it can pull you in and, and make you feel whole. So that, that, that has been uh, one of the best things for me. It's helped my family uh, in different ways, uh, mm -hmm. helped me to, to aspire to be better every day. So uh, having said that, you know, it, it affects your community. You look over at your neighbors differently. You try differently. You don't want to let down your, your brethren either. You want to hold yourself up to a different level. And, uh, and hopefully you, you can present yourself on a level with them. And that's, that's masonry for me right now. And that's a little bit of my journey. There's more to it. Um, it's a little deeper. And one day maybe we'll go into that. <laughs> but uh, right now that's, uh, you know, my mother, my mother was very, uh, when she gave me that dagger, that was it. Yeah. Oh, that was it. I was like, it's, you know. This meant that, something. That, that, yeah. it, it, everything, everything to me. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, the journey. And I, I remember the day they, they said I was making a, I was doing a music video. And uh, I got the call, like, oh, they're going to come. Uh, my wife called, so they're going to come do the uh, the investigation, right? But they come over to the house. Was that I, you, Paul? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was there because uh, <laughs> then it had come by our lodge a few times to visit with us. And that's one of our things at Maple is like, in order to be a part of Maple, we want you to come out to see we're the right fit for you and you're the right fit for us. Right. So Dennis came out like six, seven times right. before we offered him an application. And uh, Peter Vung and Carmen Tucci were his sponsors. Yeah. And then they approached me. They said, uh, what are your thoughts about visiting him as uh, of a senior warden? Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz I initiated you. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And uh, a past master came with me. And uh, and brother uh, Thomas Patrice. Yeah, Thomas Patrice. And uh, very worshipful brother Doug, uh, uh, Brian Stapley. Brian yeah. Stapley. Yeah, yeah. We were there, and uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, uh, very worshipful Brian Stapley is a very small, timid man. He was like, this guy is huge. <laughs> but when we got to uh, Dennis's house, his family was so warm and welcoming. Mm. And I saw a different side of Dennis totally because... The guys always talk about the guy's an M&A fighter. He can knock your block off. <laughs> but when you go to someone's house, that tells you all about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or them. they really are. And I, we got such great love and affection from his kids. His wife was very welcoming. They asked us questions. And I go, in my heart, I said, this is a Mason for life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when we came and, back. And again, I, I, must, I must stress that my wife is extremely supportive. Yes, she yes. is. She, she very, she's amazing. And my daughter's, my son is in Dimolay. He's a master counselor oh, yeah. in Dimolay. Awesome. Uh, he's, uh, he's recently turned 21 in January, so he's looking at coming into the craft as well. And uh, that, that's a dream come true for me to see oh, him yeah. start at a young age. Um, you know, I, 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 as young as they can get in is, is as fast as I wish they could, I'll be honest with you, with the world the way the world is and seeing yeah. them come around good people and people who have morals and have aspirations to do positive things in the community, to see my son go down that road and be around people who love service and want to do service for their community. What better is that than people who really know their word? Yes, right? absolutely. And I think this is a good opportunity that if we can bring the young men in and sort of give them a direction so they won't fall into that that new age um partying habits mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this is good like it, it was it, i've seen ty go through the dimelay and i was there when he became master council i was just talking to him over the weekend about opening up dimelay in uh, york district so when you have the light right leadership and you have the love and support from your family it, it totally totally changes the dynamics yeah, um, anything's possible. Anything's possible, yeah. right? A young 21-year-old says, I'll take on the project of setting up Dimoli in York District. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the, in the support uh, Brother Rawlings has given his son is huge. He goes, Paul, talk to him. Yeah. See what you can get. Well, what a special experience that must be for you personally with your son. Yeah, I, and, you know, I can go back to Malone Lodge looking over and I can see uh, uh, Worshipful Brother Mark uh, Snowflake and his son, Ryan yeah. Snowflake, Brother Ryan that Snowflake. That was a special and, night. Oh, yeah, it? and seeing next year, yeah. next year, yeah, oh, my gosh, that's like the stars of a line. Exactly. Here. I'm, I said, I got to see that. I was that, bummed you know? out. I had been called away to work and I wasn't able to make it, but I've been oh. looking for I had that circled on my calendar oh, yeah. once I met well, the you, two fellas for a while. You missed a good one. That was I, that I was know I did. I know I did. Lodge. It, was it was beautiful. Really nice. Yeah, those yeah. are the special times. And again, so having your son come up through the craft on the Demole and and yeah. you know uh, yeah, slowly him. coming up through the the Blue Lodge craft, yes. 
Um, it's going to be very special, yeah. and it's uh, kind of goes with some of the pieces that we get, right? It's uh, laying that foundation and raising a superstructure, yes. and, and also uh, really seeing the inward part of man. And, and like you talked about in part one of our episode, you know, we're sitting here with uh, Paul Shagger, a Sikh, and we have Dennis Rawlings, who, again, like uh, uh, Bert just pointed out, uh, I would run the other way if I saw Dennis coming, <laughs> but uh, these guys are the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, you can Sincere. really see exactly. That's I'm trying to True look for those sincerity. words. Yeah. Um, their passions for well, I can tell you, each other and people are just amazing. Yeah, it's evident. Brother Ron says a heart of gold. I think Masonry just does something to someone. Yep. The toughest of people just turn into like candle wax. Yeah. They're so like people are generally nice. Yeah. You just have to take the layers away, and that's well, what Masonry does. And that's does. exactly it. Again, we see the inward part of man. We don't yes. care about what you look like or where you've come from. It's really what uh, we t talked about it upstairs, you know, the, chipping away the, the is, bad parts is, and getting is, into the perfection if, side, if, right? If, if I could say one thing, though, there there is one thing, uh, uh, you know, it's you know, a man can look scary, he can look scary, but my father-in-law, he's uh, he doesn't look scary, yeah. but when he's upset, he's scared. You're scared, <laughs> right? and I think that I think that that that's something he learned from his family in masonry because yeah. when a man holds himself to a high degree. When he's upset, he doesn't have to let you know he's upset. Yeah, mm -hmm. You'll yeah. already know you've yeah. upset him. Yeah, exactly. And that's the scary thing with masonry on that level that you don't want to let down your brethren. You don't want to, you know, fall down. You want to make sure that you aspire to a, a higher goal so that you can not see that look of disappointment yeah. in their face. You yeah, know what absolutely. I mean? And that's what you don't want, right? So You know, it's, uh, it's interesting you brought up the visit at Malone Lodge, which I think yeah. is an excellent tie-in for you with your son seeing uh mark and ryan snowflack have that special evening together wow. and on that evening uh i had never had the opportunity to see you really perform i should say because you you did a poem that evening at the dinner and it touched me so deeply i was blown away by that right. and uh again that's something that you would expect to come from from you if i was to just meet you and look at you i would never have guessed that that was your your who you were but boy, did it come through clear that that is that is your heart. You shared your heart, and so maybe um, if if you could, you could share some of your would, your work with our listeners and the brethren. And definitely. Again, I, I just would like to thank the uh, York District Social Committee, uh, Social Media Committee, uh, for having me on here. Uh, this poem that I wrote is called Mason. Uh, I wrote it in the month of May. Um, it's a uh, it has some allegory to it. There is definitely some uh, uh, some things for the uh, the master mason and uh, and maybe the entered apprentice uh, will understand as well in the fellow craft, but uh, in other degrees. So uh, here here's how it goes. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, at least find it entertaining at the very least. I met a man that was below me, not in wealth, not in stature, but degree. And although distinctions among men are necessary to preserve subordination, in my brother I am he. Him, able, pleasing in her, the great mother, Ma at, Ma son, Mason. This is the month of the Mason, the builder of the mine inside the mind. Now see, I am a free and accepted Mason. Speculative are we not, for operative is just a thought of me, worker be, thought me. Oh me, looking to be illuminated, here the key. I see you, but you don't see me. We are definitely from the same family tree of knowledge. University College, be my family, hear me roar, for the righteous protects the poor. The widow's son, Hiram, the great Hiram, the goat became the Hiram. To the holy royal arch, I ran Jerusalem, Salah, put down the missiles, Iran, Salah. Peace for the whole earth, how come the purse in the fictional corporation gives birth? Corpus, corpse, peace, corps, soul dire, back to mud, out the mud, mother earth. I give thanks for all of the Elohim, for the colors of the rainbow, Pegasus, Dionysus, gold, black, and green. And of course, to the supreme being, great architect of the universe, grand geometrician of the universe, most high lifts our curse. For we have all died, we have no fear of death or driving in a hearse. Bless my brethren, lift their pain and help them when it hurts. Health, wealth, and happiness for all to live in the most glorious time on this earth. To watch it shine, 
standing in front of the holy shrine, watching entertainment and dancing divine in the ball. Winter, spring, summer to fall. You only live once, I live three times later. In the court, I court the lady. This is a call for my walking king, Johnny, come lately. Right, worshipful Dorian Baxter, thank you for my cane greatly. To the queen allowing me to play this beautiful end game, you're a true representative of a lady who knows no shame. There is only honor when speaking your royal highness's name. To the queen and to the craft, I proclaim. I met a man that was below me, not in wealth, not in stature. You see, it was me, staring at first, looking at second, and rose on three. Beautiful. Excellent. That is incredible. Just like last time when I heard that the first time, it gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Like, yeah, you, you feel that. That was excellent. Excellent job. Outstanding. <laughs> You hadn't heard that before. No, that's, that was incredible. Isn't that yeah. something? Yeah. Respect. Imagine this being spread out, spread out across all the masonry. Oh. How many more poets we can have come yeah. out? Oh, just spark the interest, the the, the creativity. The, it's incredible. It really is. I didn't realize, but uh, one of our past masters, Worshipful Brother uh, John Paul Klepo, actually wrote a poem uh, for the York District when I think before he became a Worshipful Master. And it was on the old York District website for many years, and he had uh, showed it to me. So we have uh, quite a few poets. Yeah, I actually uh, I spoke to him the other night, and I actually asked him. I said, can you prepare something, get something ready, so that uh, in the following year to come, when we're doing our the, the meetings, I can bring him out and he can present oh, his wow. poetry as well. And he said 100% he's on board. That's fantastic. That's awesome. That Cult is great. Cultivating the talent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sure. It's, such, it's such a different angle on masonry i think that's the most uh, exciting part is it's not the it's not your usual masonic experience it is, you know, and this it's, is it's really special it was phenomenal if you guys were at the grand master's banquet uh that was a lovely lovely piece that uh brother rollings did and it, the standing ovation he got was tremendous yeah. mm -hmm. my wife uh, who was with me was like yeah <laughs> with awe shock right yeah but Knowing my wife who she is, she's come to love Dennis as a brother as well. Yeah. Right? And she's very humble that she said to me the other day, she goes, I'm glad I know your friend. Oh, cool. it, was, it, was, it feels good when a wife acknowledges your brother yeah. Yeah. as a brother. Well, to me, again, I've got a few of those fantastic brothers here, and they're extension at family. And, uh, and they come over often, and my kids love them like uncles, and... And it's just amazing. And so again, that's another aspect and another layer of this craft that just allows us to be better people, but it Absolutely. puts us in touch with other like-minded better people too. Oh, my and kids call me Uncle Dennis. Just fantastic. Go, when are we going to Uncle Dennis's yeah, house? Yeah, right? <laughs> it's, it's great. Like, see, that's what masonry is. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. You have a couple more, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the one that, uh, that I wrote for the... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the the show the podcast first three knocks um th this one here is uh it, it, i'll just uh, give you a little brief uh, interlude the, the the first part goes it wasn't i wasn't scared when i heard the first three knocks so it, what that means is is um to, to the community at large uh, people get fearful and they look and they see um oh masonry they see a bad light on masonry um when i say i wasn't scared it means I'm not scared to give myself to my community and my country. I understand that, you know, like in, uh, in the first degree, we may fall down, we may do things that may be an error, but, uh, you know, get back up as, as, as fast as you can, like any fighter should, right? Um, but I wasn't scared, meaning don't be scared to, to give yourself to people who are trying to do better, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about that, that part, like, like we've already established, the model's already set, yeah. right? And it's gotten us this far. So, and when I mean gotten us, I mean the world. All of <laughs> us. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All of us. Absolutely. Because there would be no ambulances. There would <laughs> yeah. be no, no, there would. Be no system to, to turn around and stop. You know, uh, you know there'd be there'd be nothing. So it would be just selfish. Parasitic. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> right? Okay. Um, and, and, and that can happen. Sometimes we can fall down and we can, uh, you know, the mankind can get in that. But as we rise and we evolve, we should, we should try to aspire to do better, right? So um, that, that, that's the, uh, the, the pre uh, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The premise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, here, here, you ready? Okay. So this is called The First Three Knocks, written by Dennis Rawlings. I wasn't scared when I heard the first three knocks. Echoes in the wind lying down in the dark as precepts of the mind. Don't you hear them when they talk? 
We are the Master Mason, we must be talking shop. Secrets of the mind, we all know they don't talk. Screaming in the loop of failed obligations and oaths, the Judas hangs and swings on his celibate rope. Lost in empty hate and left hoping he chokes, not in eye for eye. Wishing my brother the greatest dream and to be alive, I'll rise. Oh, to see happiness when I look into your eye, for I am my brother's keeper, the angel of death, the grim reaper. Both bow down before his holy crown. I am but a speaker, to feature a preacher, king of all kings, so pleased to meet you. Myself all in one before the sun, Aries, the great high ram. I am looking into the eye of the great high ram. Up the winding staircase, there I am. Bam, bam, bam. I wasn't scared when I heard the first three knocks. That's amazing. <laughs> that is something else. That is something else. That's the first time I've heard that. One. That's that amazing. Is, Again, the goosebumps come. Yeah. You move people. It's amazing. Your words are just uh, so, you've picked them so wisely. You've put them together so eloquently. And then you, like an artist, like a true artist, just delivered deliver it with your heart. And we feel it right we here, feel it. right yes. here in the chest. Thank you. Amazing. I Excellent see that, work. Uh, I see that as a brother working away at his ashlar. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. A hundred percent. I think um, the one thing uh, was it, who, who said it upstairs about the, the the stone and it's already there. He just had to chip away at it. That was Paul. Yeah, when when I when I write uh, the anything, I sit down and I it's already there. I'm, I can't lie to you and say I yeah. did something yeah. because it was already there. It's just a point of going over it and then refining and repeated efforts alone, indefatigable exertion, right? Yeah. Yeah. Over and over and over Absolutely. again, constantly turning around, listening to it and, and cleaning little edges, right? You know, the name Ra Lings, right? So, Ra, yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean? And, and, and Ra Lings is how we say to the people, right? It's the ball, right? Yeah. So, you know, um, and, the, and very grateful to do any work that I can with you. And if you need anything, I'll extend any uh, any resource I can to help lift up uh, masonry and Freemasonry as I can. Uh, we've already got a, a good gentleman, Sid, from the uh, Victoria Lodge. That, yep. that, that would be good, too. So yep. Excellent. Anything yeah. we can do. Well, I think, again, now that we've had you on here and we're able to showcase your wonderful artistic talents, uh, we would like to definitely make it a part of our regular podcast or at least uh, share more of your uh, poems and, and such with, uh, I, with I, us. I, have, the, the I can write whatever, yeah, that's, whenever yeah, I have more. It's just a, we'll be talking. Yeah, we'll be exactly, talking yeah. for sure. And again, this yeah. is what this is all about, right? Bringing everybody together Maybe to, to join. Maybe at uh, holding poetry classes this summer. Uh, could very well be, right? <laughs> Absolutely, right? I think it's fantastic, and then again, a new addition to what we're adding another layer, and it's just going to again, I think, bring out better parts of everything we're trying to put forward here. Yeah. So, welcome to the team. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Anything well done. Do. All right, brethren. Well, again, it was uh, really nice to have uh, brother Dennis Rawlings as well as uh, worshipful brother uh, Paul Shagger uh, as our guests in part one and two. Um, Take a look. We're, we don't have the secretary's desk to clear this time, but we will be out there in Grand Lodge Communication in July. So look for the first three Knox fellas uh, out of the York District, and uh, we'll be uh, trying to run with some podcasts and just get people uh, involved. You know, involved and yeah. introduce us, and hopefully we'll find a lot more brethren and friends. Again, thanks for coming Thank out, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy what you do. All right. Amazing. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The First Three Knocks. Happy to meet, sorry to part, happy to meet again. <laughs>